Okay, you're welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit that bell and share. Today is Friday, Bible Talks, and I want to get quickly into the subject for today. I don't want to waste too much of your time doing the, the intros, but the show is available on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 20 hours Central African time. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Um, same time, same Days. So today we're doing Bible Talks and we're continuing with the series of the manifestation of the Spirit, or as many would like to uh, refer to it, the gifts of the Spirit. And we had mentioned that there are about nine uh, gifts of the Spirit that are given to each one, to the prophet of all. So uh, the Holy Spirit is the one that's responsible for giving these gifts. I do appreciate and acknowledge how important this subject is for every believer and how just that understanding this very well can make us effective uh, believers because as believers we're not just the ordinary human being we are human beings with superpowers if you would like to put it that way uh yes and the bible does also promise us of the powers of age to come but assures us that we would have tasted of the powers of the age to come in this age. And today I want to get into the discerning of spirits, uh, which is a very important and interesting subject for me. I really love this gift, the discerning of spirits. I believe there's a lot that you need to understand about the ability to discern. I'm going to explain to you just what kind of spirits uh, we distinguish as we are discerning. The word discern would mean to distinguish uh, between spirits. So we know that there are not only one kind of spirits out there. We don't only have human spirits, but we know we have demonic spirits and we also know that we have angelic spirits. And in many cases, we have the spirit of spirits that we also uh, have to discern. Uh, the Holy Spirit and the Bible in the book of First John tells us just how we can discern the Holy Spirit and distinguish him from the spirit of the Antichrist. Uh, and this is by identifying that the Holy Spirit is the only one that can say that Jesus is Lord. And the Holy Spirit is the only one that acknowledges that Jesus came in the flesh. And any spirit that does not acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh is not of God. And this spirit is that spirit of the Antichrist, which has been said that will come into the world and is already in the world even today. So today we're going to discuss discerning of spirits and I pray that this particular subject will be a blessing to you and that this particular subject also is going to empower you in your spiritual walk to be able to discern and distinguish uh, between spirits. I must mention that discerning of spirits goes beyond just distinguishing spirits, but it also goes into uh, identifying the intention of spirits. And I'm going to show you a couple of things from the scriptures. To begin with, we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 10. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits, uh, which is the gift we are focusing on today. And we'll have two more gifts to discuss afterward. But the discerning of spirits, as I mentioned earlier, is the ability that the Holy Spirit gives to individuals to be able to distinguish. Now, we do know that as a believer, as a Christian, we must naturally be discerning apart from the gift of uh, discernment. For example, when the Bible does tell us that we can distinguish the Holy Spirit from the spirit of the Antichrist, this is discernment on one level, to discern on the basis of the word of God, to discern on the basis of what is said 
by the Spirit. So what a spirit confesses is very important in us exercising discernment as a as a general spiritual ability that we as Christians uh, need to have. But when we talk about the gift of discerning of spirits, this is a super ability. This is beyond one's natural ability that has been built through exercising one's spiritual muscles. So discerning of spirits would then be a gift that would increase this capacity in a supernatural way in a moment when such a discernment is needed. Now, in order to break it down further, I must take you through uh, a couple of uh, points and scriptures that will help you understand how the discerning of spirits works and just further understand what exactly the discerning of spirits means. To begin with, uh, remember that we discussed in one of our earlier Bible talks, and in many Bible talks, we've discussed this fact that Man is a spirit, he lives inside a body and has a soul. So when God formed man from the dust of the ground, he breathed the spirit into man and man became a living soul and the soul became the interface through which he is able to control this vehicle called the body by the spirit. So the spirit of man is the inhabitant of the house, the body and the interface in order for that spirit to be able to function here in this natural world is the soul. The soul makes us relate to our environment and to other human beings. Uh, the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. Now, your spirit man, who is the real you, uh, if you're watching me, I would like you to just repeat after me in order for this to sink in. My spirit is the real me. I live in a body and I have a soul. So your spirit is the real you. You live in a body and you have a soul. This means that the function of your body is a reflection of your spirit. What your body is able to do is a physical reflection of your spirit's abilities. Because you can walk and you have legs in the body, that tells you that your spirit is mobile. So your spirit may not necessarily move in the same way that your body moves by walking. There could be way more ways that your spirit could travel. But the fact that your body can walk is a reflection of what your spirit is able to do. The fact that your body has eyes shows that your spirit can see. The fact that your body has a mouth shows that your spirit is able to communicate. And so your spirit has senses and these senses would be the original of what a sense would be like you know in the natural uh world in our bodies we understand that we have five senses sight uh hearing taste touch and smell but in the spirit in your spirit the senses that you experience in your body would be far much uh, more in terms of their intensity and in terms of their numbers. So you are able to sense in more different ways than you would sense uh, physically. But the physical aspects of your body are spiritual representations, or should I say the sensory aspects of your body are physical representations of what your spirit is able to do. Uh, I'm reminded of a scripture, I'll, I'll just brush over it quickly, that says, let us Therefore, make man in our, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God here is describing to us how that our image is made in God's image, right? But it is a reflection of his likeness. It means that everything our bodies are able to do is a reflection of God's spiritual abilities. And so your spirit having senses then goes on to discern on the basis of these senses. I constantly read you a scripture from the book of Hebrews that talks about how strong me belongs to those who are mature. Let me show it to you. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So here again, the Bible is not talking about your natural senses. It says strong meat belongs to those who are of age. 
spiritually. The strong meat that is being referred to is the meat of the word. For you to get to a, a certain structure of the word, a, a certain, you know, the word has got transformative power. The word today can appear to you as healing and the word tomorrow can appear to you as prosperity and the word the other day will appear to you as peace. This transformative power of the word also reveals itself to us in stages. Remember that the Bible says the word of God has the ability to become. In the book of John chapter one, it tells us that the word became flesh. So the process by which the word of God is converted from its spiritual material into the natural material is the process that is known as the word becoming flesh. So when the word becomes uh, milk to you, that is when you are at the babyhood stage of your Christianity. But as you begin to grow and ingest more and more and more milk of the word, you begin to grow in your spirit and you are able to now accommodate the strong meat of the word. And it is at, that, at this stage now that you begin to exercise your senses to discern good from evil. I'll give you an example. Have you noticed that there are some people that would comfortably sit in a church that is obviously not good for them? Uh, if someone taught them something that's not bibl biblically accurate or doctrinally sound according to the doctrine of Jesus, they would take it as the gospel truth, even though it's spiritual poison. You know, it's very possible for you to get satisfied on a poisonous meal. You have a poisonous meal here, eat it, get satisfied, even fall asleep, and then not wake up. So there are some people that are able to ingest spiritually poisonous meals and not distinguish that this is good and this is bad. This is because their knowledge of the word, firstly, is small. So they are still at the milk stages of the word. But once they begin to ingest the meat of the word, their senses develop to be able to distinguish right from wrong. And this ability comes, as I said, by the word of God. So your spirit has senses and your spirit is able to discern. So this gift then comes to heighten the senses of your spirit. Okay. Now, importantly, uh, I would like to stress out something very important about, about this particular subject. This, you need to pay attention here because I'm going to tell you something very deep about the difference in the spirits that we distinguish and discern. For many people, when they read this scripture that tells us that we are able to discern spirits uh, in form of a spiritual gift given to us by the Holy Spirit, when many people read this discerning of spirits, the first thing that comes to the mind is demons. They think this is a gift that only operates in the context of deliverance. When we are trying to cast out demons from people, then we should distinguish whether this one came from the ocean or this one came from uh, wherever demons come from, you know, or to distinguish that, no, this one is the spirit that makes him drink alcohol and this is the spirit that throws him near fire. People think that is what discerning of spirits is restricted to, that we are only distinguishing between demonic spirits to be able to tell that this one is this spirit and that one is that spirit. Well, that is a part of it, but you must note that spirits are of many kinds. I know this is extra biblical, but if you read the book of Enoch, it talks about how God, the Lord of spirits has filled the whole earth with spirits. And I'm going to show you from the scriptures just how that it is not only demonic spirits, but it is angelic spirits, it is human spirits, and it is the spirits of things. Because you see, when God created the heavens and the earth, he put spirits in them. And so everything on the earth has spirits. Let me show you a scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and leave? Notice that the Bible does not say the father of our 
spirits. Because the father of spirits is a general term. The book of Colossians says, And to us there is but one God, the Father in heaven, from whom all things came. It means every single spirit you can think of originally came from God. Some spirits are in a rebellious state right now. Some spirits are in an obedient state right now. Some people, are f- some spirits are fulfilling assignments. But every single spirit that exists came from God. Therefore, God is the father of spirits. I want to read you another scripture from the book of Numbers that describes God in a way that I've not seen anyone else describe in the Bible. Moses described God in a very interesting way, which gives us insight further into the spirit world. Numbers chapter 27, verse 13 to 16. And when you have seen it, you also shall be gathered to your people as Aaron, your brother, was gathered. For in the wilderness of Zin, during the strife of the congregation, you rebelled against my command to hallow me at the waters before their eyes. These are the waters of Meribah at Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. Then Moses spoke to the Lord saying, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Now, this was a time when uh, Moses had led the children of Israel all the way to Jordan. And God had told him that he would not cross over into the promised land. So Moses began to, uh, God told Moses to go on, on, on top of a mountain to see the promised land, even though he was not going to step into the promised land. Because Moses did not execute God's instruction the way he should have. And so God assured him that he will not enter the promised land, but he will see it. Now, after God had showed Moses the promised land and showed him the beauty of it, the land of milk and honey, uh, God told him, you shall be gathered into your people like your brother Aaron, which simply means you shall die and go to your people who have died before you. Now, Moses, in responding to God, after having seen the promised land and hearing, says, God, the God of the spirits, he refers to him as the God in requesting for a new leader to replace him. He refers to God as the God of the spirits of all flesh. Now, I want you to understand that there is not only one kind of flesh. All animals that you know are flesh. And Moses is saying the God of the spirits of all flesh. So if you have dogs, he's the God of the spirit of your dog. If you have a cat, he's the God of the spirit of your cat. If you have trees, he's the God of the spirit of your trees. Speaking of trees, I need to show you Jesus exercising his authority over the spirit of things. Mark chapter 11, verse 12 to 14. Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Now, when you skip and go to verse 20, it describes what happened the very next morning. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Jesus Christ understands that every single organism on the earth has a spirit. Every single thing has a spirit. And this spirit can be brought under subjection. I remember a scripture in the book of Deuteronomy where Moses says, God, which nation is close? Which nation is blessed like our nation, which is close unto their God? For the Lord God is in all those things that we call upon him for. So when we call upon God for anything, and by the way, this is valuable information I'm giving to you. If you learn to harness this, there is nothing in this world that you will be subject to. Just as Jesus had mastery over the spirit of the wood. Uh, There's a scripture in the book of Corinthians that talks about how there are different uh, kinds of 
of of flesh. We have the flesh of fish, the flesh of animals. Remember that in the book of Genesis, when God was creating the heavens and the earth, God did not create the animals with his own hands. Neither did God create the trees with his own hands. Do you remember that God actually commanded the earth to bring forth beasts of every kind? And God commanded the earth to bring forth trees and herbs of every kind. God did not speak, uh, breathe into the animals one by one, breathe to the lion, into the lion, breathe into the antelope, breathe into the goat. No, the earth produced them living. What I'm trying to tell you is that if God wanted to create man from the dust of the ground, a living uh, being already, he would have. But the difference is that he created only the body by his hands and breathed himself into the body, which means our life came from God and not from the earth. So the earth itself has a spirit, the spirit of the earth, which is in every animal, in your dogs, in your cats, in your goats, in your cows, in your pigs. And remember the Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes describes how that after man has returned to the dust of the ground, his spirit returns to God who gave it. If you're wondering whether your dog will go to heaven, no, the spirit did not come from God. It came from the earth. So the spirit of your dog is the spirit of the earth. The spirit of your trees are the spirit of the earth. And because our spirit is superior to the spirit of the earth having come from God, this is why man has dominion over the earth and all its spirits. So we can distinguish between the spirit of things and the spirit of the earth. And Jesus demonstrated this when he spoke to the tree. He further went on to say, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you shall speak to a mountain and tell it to throw itself. This is not a figurative or spiritual speech. You will physically speak to the mountain because there's a spirit inside it. And it will obey. So there is a difference between distinguishing between demonic spirits and distinguishing between spirits of things. Now, here's an important thing for you to also understand. Now that you know that things have spirits. The fact that the Bible says God is in all those things that we call upon him for shows us that every single thing on this earth. And in our last Bible talks, when I told you about, about the gift of prophecy, I asked you this question, where exactly in the human body does your spirit dwell? Is there space in your body? for your spirit man to dwell. Because if you say your spirit dwells inside your stomach, does this mean when you eat food, your, your spirit man is displaced? Doesn't the Bible say that God dwells inside our bodies, that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit? Where exactly within our bodies does the Holy Spirit dwell? And if I called upon God for this microphone, then God will come into this microphone because that's what the book of Deuteronomy tells us, that God is in all those things we call upon him for. It means within this microphone, there is space to inhabit, to, sorry, to accommodate God. God can inhabit every rock, every tree. This is why God appeared to Moses in a burning bush uh, by his angel. This is why God commanded Moses to strike a stone. Remember Jesus saying, if you to speak to a stone rather, and not to strike it. Moses struck it. That's why he did not enter the promised land. Uh, Jesus said, if you do not worship me, I will raise the stones. The stones have spirits. They are able to accommodate a spirit. This is why distinguishing between the spirit of the thing and what other spirit could have inhabited the thing is very important. Because you may be looking at a rock, yet the spirit that has inhabited it and taken over it is not the original spirit of the rock. So this gift enables us to distinguish in our daily lives, not just in ministry, spirits, to be able to distinguish spirits. And this enables us to know what spirits to subjugate, to put under subjection, to determine the course of their actions because of our ability to be able to identify them. Remember Jesus Christ before casting out some demons would ask questions like, 
What is your name? Because the identity of a spirit may be very important in you putting it under subjection. So the discerning of spirits is very important in us being effective in every aspect of our lives. I hope you've enjoyed this Bible Talks, discerning of spirits and learn something. I pray, I pray, I pray that this word will enter into your heart and cause it to, to germinate. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit that bell and share. Show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, Monday is the political segment of the show. Wednesday is the educative segment of the show on Fridays, Bible Talks. Um, next week, we'll continue with the Gift of the Spirit series discussing the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. We'll, I'll explain it to you as one gift. Once again, please do subscribe. Leave your like, your comments on the video. And see you on the next one. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.